sorry to scare you. I'm just here again with another semi-informative video. So I thought about making another addition to my IG-11 store display. I had the idea that maybe an animated Baby Yoda would be quite a crowd pleaser. Now my electronics and motor skills are minimal at best. That's okay though as I just wanted a pretty basic movement on him anyway, reminiscent of an old theme park ride or a shopping mall holiday display. I also wanted him to be activated by a motion sensor like how IG is. So I poked around the interwebs a bit and came across a few ideas that even a big dummy like me could probably figure out. The parts needed are pretty inexpensive and easy to come by and the assembly can be done with very basic tools that everyone should probably have. The first thing I needed to do was build a cube structure that would hold the motor and the pipe that would be sliding up and down to animate Bayo. The easiest and cheapest way to make this of course is with common everyday PVC pipes from the hardware store. You'll need to get 8 corner pieces, 2 T joints, and a cross joint as well as a length or two of PVC pipe. I opted for the half inch pipe as this was more than sufficient for my needs. I measured the inside of the box, which is actually an inverted trash can, that my bayo in a bag will be sitting on and giving myself a few inches of cushion around that, I figured out the size of the assembly that I needed. It ended up being about 10 inches cubed or so. And so then I cut 10 pieces of pipe at uh, 8 inches in length, you know, accounting for the length of the connectors on each end. I also cut some shorter ones for the upper sections that hold the T-joints and the cross-section joint. The pipes fit together snugly enough that no glue is required. Besides, I'm probably going to need some adjustments along the way, so it's better that I can take it apart if needed. I used my trusty rubber mallet, his name is Emmett, to pound everything together to make sure I got a nice tight fit. After the basic cube is done, I'll strap her down to the piece of plywood using metal tube straps and screws on each side. There are several sources for motors out there online, but I ordered mine from FrightProps.com. They got really good strong motors at reasonable prices, as well as a ton of other stuff to make Halloween and animated displays, and they ship pretty promptly too. I opted for the 12 volt motor with the 12 volt power supply. The motor has an easy to follow color guide right on it telling you what each wire is for. The red wire is your positive, and for the negative you can choose either the blue for fast speed or the green for a slower speed. The yellow and black wires are for parking, but I'm not 100% sure what that means. I think it has something to do with the ability to stop the motor at a specific point if you have some sort of special adapter to go with it. It's not something I'm going to mess with right now, but it's nice to know that I have that option. For the first push rod, I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole in the end of the piece of pipe so I can attach it to the motor. This will get bolted to the bent metal bracket that was provided. I'm using a long bolt with washers on each end and a lock nut so that I don't have to worry about it coming loose. Tighten the bolt just enough so the assembly can still freely swing. Before I add the assembly to the motor, I make sure there's a clearance for it to move. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to attach the motor, but I found these split ring hangers at my hardware store that seemed like they would work pretty good. They have a 3 8 inch female end on them that I'll insert a threaded rod into. Since they are sold with only one female end, I ended up buying another set so I could pair them together and have ends on both sides. It's actually quite a sturdy setup when it's finished. I didn't take a lot of footage of this step as it was a lot of trial and error, but basically what I did was cut the push rod to a length just below the bottom of the cross connector. I then drilled a hole on that end and attached another pipe in the same manner with washers and a lock nut. I added a few nuts between them for spacing. For the cross connector, I ended up reaming it out just enough so the second pipe easily slides in it. But not so much that there's a lot of play. As you can see, it all goes pretty smoothly once you have everything kind of dialed in. Whoopee! 
Now let's talk about how to hook up all the electronics. We will need a PIR, a relay module, a USB cable, and some wire. These are all available on Amazon. Links in the description. Let's start with the PIR. We will need a 3-pin wire connector. For clarity, let's put the red wire on the positive pin and the black wire on the negative and the green, or white in my case, on the out. Next we're going to chop off the end of the USB cable and expose the red and the black wires. You can snip off the other wires inside as you won't be using them. We'll twist the red wire from the USB to the red wire on the PIR. The black USB wire goes with the black wire. Now we'll stick the two twisted together red wires into the DC plus slot on your relay. And the black wires will go into the DC minus slot. The out wire from the PIR will go into the in slot on the module. Now for the 12 volt power adapter, you can either snip off the end of the power supply and twist the wires, but it's much easier to buy a power supply adapter for like three bucks. This just plugs into the socket of the power supply and then has screw slots to insert your wires. We're going to insert the green or the blue wire, depending on your speed preference, into the negative side of the adapter. For the positive end, we'll insert a wire of similar gauge to the wires that are coming off the motor. I think it's like 18 gauge or something. The other end of this wire will go into the COM slot on your relay module. The red wire on your motor will go into the NC slot. I don't know what those mean either. Simple enough, right? See, it's not so bad. Now plug in your USB cable and your power adapter cable and test it out. You can adjust the sensitivity and the time delay on your PIR to fit your needs. Now that I have the mechanics all worked out, it's time to finish off the cover. Like I mentioned earlier, I just used an inverted vintage garbage can that I had. I need to cut a slot out of the top for the rod to go through. For that, I'll use my Dremel with a cutoff wheel. I will also need a hole cut in the front for the PIR to be inserted. I used a 7 8 inch Forstner bit for that. I think that's how you pronounce it. A paddle bit, or if you have a big enough drill bit, that's fine too. A little bit of super glue will hold all this in just fine. I didn't just want this white ball sitting there, so I had to hide it with a little bit of a Star Wars-y type decor. Dreeblies, as they're officially called. First, I covered the area with a piece of circuit board that I drilled a hole out of and painted a flat black. And then I just attached it with a little hot glue. Then I framed that with a painted piece of trim that I pilfered from the top of a vintage Fisher-Price minibus. I used the axles from that as well. You know, why not? I had one laying around. I like using these Craig self-tapping screws. I bought a huge lifetime supply box of them at a garage sale for like three bucks a couple years ago. They have a square hole in them, which makes it a lot easier to screw in. And it also looks like it would fit better in the Star Wars world. To keep the display intact, because, you know, people like to pick up stuff, I decided I'd better fasten the bag down to the box using fender washers and screws. As you can see, I also filled the bag with cardboard to give it some shape and some space for Baby to move around in. Now let's remove Bayo's inner filling. He has a bag of plastic beads for weight in him and a lot of stuffing. Once I got it all out, I discovered there was a nice harder plastic disc around his neck area that already had a hole right in the center. It's perfect. He's a perfect fit, and the mechanism has no problem lifting him. He's actually pretty light. I'm going to glue his hands to the bag for some more added realism. I initially used hot glue, but that didn't stick so well to his vinyl hands, so I'll eventually end up using super glue. I guess he's not removable after all. And now for the final installation. I think he looks pretty good here. And with his arms glued down, it makes his head have to ever so slightly turn as he raises and lowers. It's pretty cool. I think this one worked out all right. Thanks for watching, everyone.